my son just finished his junior year, so he will be a senior next year. And I think just watching a lot of friends, kids leave the home, grow up, I've been aware of them ending their high school career and excited for what's next, but it's hard. As a mom, my heart is already oh, sad, yeah. yep. really sad. And so it, it was a month ago, maybe, I had this really profound dream where my son was packing and it was, he was going to a summer boot camp, like with the Marines. And in your dream, but not like in, in my reality. Dreams. Okay. So yeah. So he was packing to go to a a Marine boot camp. And he was scared, as anyone leaving home would be. And I saw a little trepidation in my dream, but he his head was high and he was he was going. And I was so proud of him. Turned to me, whose mother's heart is just weeping and even right now, it's just like, oh. But God's presence in that dream was so intense to my heart. And God told me that Jake is so ready to do this. He's so ready to enter into life. He has what it takes. And Stacy, I have him. Give me Jesus. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word, Jesus, was with God, and Jesus was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word, Jesus, gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one, who is himself God, is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. Welcome back, friends and listeners, to the closing episode in our Jesus Stories series here, episode five. And with me in the studio to help wrap this up is Alan, our producer, my son Sam from the Ann Sons World, and Stacy Burton from our team. Welcome, guys. Thanks Thank for bringing you. in the heavy hitters yeah. for the last round. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> make your mark. We were wondering if we were going to make the cut. So, mm, yeah. 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 Jesus is very present right now. <laughs> I'm just curious, like you coming in today, your heart, Jesus, is it fresh? Yeah, my heart's pretty tender coming in just because of a beautiful week we had with my daughter. She graduated high school last weekend. A lot of celebration uh, and also just a, an awareness of the transition and moving of time and how fast it's been. And she's about to go to college, so... Just um, celebration and tenderness. Only mm -hmm. daughter. Only daughter. Yeah. Yes, two sons. A little uh, different than sending a son out into the world. Hey, yes. what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there with this mix of both celebration and joy for hope and also this sense of loss because this season is coming to an end. And so I asked Jesus, would you tell me how you see hope right now. And he gave me the best image. It was of Esther. And the story of Esther in the Bible, like what's always stood out to me is she knew she was born for such a time as this, the time that she was in, and she had a heart for her people. And hope has such a tender, beautiful heart for the unseen or for the neglected whether that's us seeing a homeless person on the side of the road or whether that's her seeing someone at a party that nobody else notices, 
She has such a heart for the unseen and unnoticed. And so it just was a beautiful image that Jesus gave me. And he said, that is how I see hope. She is born for such a time as this. She is going to make the world a better place through her presence. And I love her heart for the underdog, for the unseen, for the people that need hope. And I mean hope within heart hope, but that her name is hope. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. And so the the neat part was he gave me that image and then immediately it was time for us. We were all at a party for hope and it was time for us to bless her. And I was able to stand up and not only give her my father's blessing, but to speak into her how Jesus sees her. And uh, it was a moment I'll never forget. And it was all because Jesus rescued my heart in that moment. Oh, gosh. I remember sitting in the 46th row of the high school gym (laughs) watching Luke, the last high school graduation in our family. And I said to Jesus, I said, how is everything not loss? Mm-hmm. How could you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's lost. And then that was that beautiful moment yes. that he actually began the revelation. He said, oh, John, nothing is lost. And it was the, actually the beginning of the book, All Things New. Mm-hmm. It's like the revelation of, wait, what? Nothing's lost? Like, that's mm-hmm. huge. How, huge. Yeah. Excited to see what book comes out of your experience at the graduation. (laughs) Give it a few years. So for me, it feels like the war on interpretation is never ceasing. So it's been a crazy season for me and my family of things going wrong, things breaking, goodness, difficulty. And as I sat with Jesus stories, I was struck by like the war for how I'm going to interpret and look back on yesterday or a month ago or today um, that just like it's always up for grabs Mm. it's always it always feels like I don't know contended for and so this this is actually really helpful for me to go back and remember like oh no remember these really hard moments where Jesus showed up and even today like it helped shift some of my interpretation of this last season it was clear in the moment but then like the next thing happens and then the next thing happens and it's kind of like Jesus, you showed up for me then, but where are you every second? And if you haven't been here two seconds ago, you're not going to be my last thought. My last thought is going to be, I don't know, my car falling apart or something. So, Is that what you mean by the war for interpretation? Yeah. I, it feels like the war is, am I going to be able to remember and choose to sit with and focus on the Jesus stories that are there if I allow myself to go there? Or am I going to let myself just kind of be buffeted along by all of the inconveniences and griefs and genuine sense of overwhelm that this season also has? So that's the, that's the war for interpretation that's sort of always going on. So Susie, your wife, got a piece of good news a couple of weeks ago. And I'm just thinking about the war of interpretation. Yeah, yeah. It's such a good expression. She got some good news. And she was telling me about it on the phone. And she's, good enough to call you. Good, like, good enough to, to be me. like, hang on, stop everything. I yeah, need to it was, call. It was good news. Yes. And she said, that's my three cheetah God. Mm-hmm. Right. And so she was pulling on a story of Jesus from years mm-hmm. back to bring it into the present moment to help with the war of interpretation of things. Right. Yep. So, what's the three cheetah story? Oh, okay. So, for the first like five, six years of marriage for Susie and I, we didn't have a retirement fund. We didn't have a nice car. We didn't have a TV. We put like every scrap of savings into travel funds to go and be reckless and experience things. And so one of these trips we got to do was to climb Kilimanjaro. And it's like a once in a lifetime. And we're doing it when we're, I don't know, mid-20s. Well, while we're there, we're in country for an extended period of time because if you're going to go all the way to Africa, why not? See some friends. Exactly. We actually we actually lived with friends who are yeah. there. So that helped make it more affordable. But yeah, so there's a wildlife preserve out there called uh, Terengiri. And you just get in these awesome 
Land Rovers that have like the safari tops with like the roof that pops up and drive around and hope you see stuff. Like it's not a guarantee. It's not Disney World. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> and we cruise in and like there's, oh, hey, look, there's like a kudu from, you know, two miles away. How cool. We saw something. Oh, look, here's a giraffe. Wow. Oh, here's like a whole herd of elephants. Oh my gosh, this place is amazing. And then we drive out where there's nobody and it's this empty field and we see this lone old wildebeest like walking along. We're like, oh, cool, cool. They're like, hey, there's another animal from really far away. When all of a sudden we see in the grass three cheetahs stalking it and our guide starts freaking out. Like this guy who lives in country like is shaking the car as he's just rocking going, you guys, this is that is one dead wildebeest. You have a camera. You're about to watch National Geographic. And we watch unfold these three cheetahs take down this old wow. wildebeest. And our guide for the rest of the day was just yammering about how we were the most fortunate of guests. And Susie and I refer to that moment as mm. the three cheetah god. Because even rolling into the park, we had this sense of like, hey, you're going to see some stuff today, guide. I don't know why, but I feel the benevolence in this moment oh, from the okay. father. And yeah. so we just kind of knew we're going to see something. Yeah. And that's been a big reference point for us. Yeah, that's awesome. Stace, what's the current Jesus story for you? Oh, the most profound Jesus story um, came recently in a dream about my son, similar to Alan. My son just finished his junior year, so he will be a senior next year. And I think just watching a lot of friends, kids leave the home, grow up as is natural and they're supposed to. <laughs> My heart, I've been aware. I've been aware of them ending their high school career and excited for what's next, but it's hard. As a mom, my heart is already oh, sad, yeah. yep. really sad. And so it, it was a month ago, maybe, I had this really profound dream where my son was packing. And it was he was going to a summer boot camp, like with the Marines. And In your dream, but not like in, in my reality. Dreams. Okay. So yeah. So he was packing to go to a, a Marine boot camp. And he was scared, as anyone leaving home would be. And I saw a little trepidation in my dream, but he, his head was high and he was, he was going. And I was so proud of him. Turned to me, whose mother's heart is just weeping. And even right now, it's just like, oh. But God's presence in that dream was so intense to my heart. And God told me that Jake is so ready to do this. He's so ready to enter into life. He has what it takes. And Stacy, I have him. And it, I woke up that morning just able to, while still a little sadness in my mama's heart, I'm able to release him now to life, to God. And I think I'll be able now to really enjoy his senior year and really champion him mm. in this last leg. So it, it was such a shift in my heart on how I'm going to release him into the world. Mm. So that's my most profound recent story. And God's intentionality in it, I, I can just still feel his presence. Wow. It's really beautiful. It's so kind of him. So kind. And he came in your dream. Yeah. Which is probably where he needed to sneak in mm -hmm. in order to catch your heart. Yeah. Yeah, not through the cognitive, rational process, right. but in the deeper. Yeah, because it was an instant shift in that respect, right? I don't. Okay. So, so guys, one of my stories has been building for really almost a decade. So it's not just something that happened last week, but it's something that when we moved to Colorado almost 10 years ago to be part of Wild at Heart, um, we entered into a really incredible season. Also, it felt like a lot of thievery started to happen, meaning uh, financial problems with hurdles, with things breaking, things being lost. Just nothing was easy. Everything felt really hard and really costly. 
And we started not just to, to feel like we were losing ground financially, but losing hope. And so this went on and on and on. And John, finally, you had mentioned, hey, this may be something you want to ask God. And we were in a time of prayer trying to break off some warfare. And the basic idea is to discover, try to discover the claims of the enemy. And so we go before the presence of God and we ask him what those claims are. And when we discover them, we get to repent of them. So long story short, you helped usher us into that, Kelly and I, and Jesus is right there with us on one side of this court setting in heaven that we can see with our eyes closed. And the accuser is on the other bench making his case. And one of the things that was exposed in that was because the enemy has to express what's going on, what his claim is, was that in one of our backstories, parents, 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 back, 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 there had been piracy, which we had no idea. We had never, we don't know about anything like that in our family history. Like uh, Jack Sparrow piracy? Like that sounds the Caribbean? Cool. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. Sounds cool if it's a Disney ride. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> something non-Disney though, something really dark. And, and so as the enemy brought that up, we were able to then ask for forgiveness of that, to break that, and that was part of the hold. In the end, the verdict of heaven uh, was there will no longer be any thievery. Mm. There will no longer be any stealing. There will no longer be this loss of finances and of hope. And, and so, but the piracy story was big. Well, at the end of that, there was a lot of freedom, and Jesus was with us the whole way. And then, John, you told me one of my favorite just moments of Jesus, which is while you were watching this unfold, you said at the very end, after the enemy had to leave and the verdict was read and there was freedom on this front, Jesus was sitting at the court bench that we were all at and he had a gold doubloon. He sounded like a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> had a gold doubloon and he was holding it with one finger and spinning it mm. <laughs> and just smiling at us, winking. And I love about Jesus, he fights for our freedom so ferociously, and yet also he's winsome, he's playful, he's just beautiful. And so one of the things in the verdict was the enemy the whole time had been holding this box, and it was a very ornate box, and he had to give that back at the end, and that box represented everything that had been stolen and taken, and so... We've seen such fruits from that, all from the moment when Jesus delivered us in a very personal, real way. I love that story. Mm -hmm. The intensity and the playfulness of God in the same yeah. moment. Yeah. Okay, so jumping in here, this is recent for me. Uh, the last season, we've had a lot of construction in our home and a lot of things breaking and a lot of like excitement as we've done some home renovations, moving back in. But a couple of weeks ago, I shared at a staff prayer time, we gathered for prayer on Tuesdays, that it felt like we had just moved back in and then everything had gone wrong. Like the skylight is leaking. There's earth coming out of the downstairs shower drain. The brand new washer has just stopped working. We've had plumbers to come by and check it out. And they said, it's going to cost us two grand just to jackhammer down and, you know, Good luck finding somebody, getting a bid to rebuild it. You know, plywood these days costs about a million dollars. So like <laughs> home renovation projects are not cheap. And it was this moment where we should have been celebrating. We're back in. We're back in our home. We've been out. We've been doing all this stuff. And yet instead we're being hit by all of these new problems and hurdles. And I think like our car literally died while dropping my daughter off at preschool. Had to get it towed out of the parking lot. Like just pick a thing. That mm -hmm. thing wasn't working. So ask for prayer and kind of one of those May Day, <laughs> I hate to say it like this, but it is what it is. It's one of those moments you're like, well, this sure can't hurt. I uh, might as well ask you guys to pray with me because um, me just wringing my hands isn't doing it. And I had a really good time of prayer. Walk back to my desk and sitting on my desk is an envelope with some cash in it that somebody had sent in for Susie and I to go on a date. Don't know this person. Don't know why they sent it, don't, but it arrived that morning. I don't know who put it on my desk because all the staff was at prayer. So it's sitting there and I've got a voicemail 
from a construction skilled friend who has called to let me know that he and a couple of buddies are going to come do mm-hmm. the work for free. We just have to pay for the parts. And it was this like, one of the, I wouldn't say that prayer always works like that for me. You know, the immediate, yeah, of course, boom, 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 boom. But that was one of those moments of like, mm-hmm. wait, what? Not only are you going to answer the immediate need for this plumbing piece, but you're also going to be lavish on top of that and be like, there's, here's some care for you and Susie. Here's some, some needs being met. And that was for me back to the war of interpretation. It was like, oh, we're not alone in this. This feels really hectic. Haven't quite solved the skylight yet. We're going to get around to that one. Right now, bowls are working really great during rainstorms. It's summer. You know. <laughs> it's <gets> um, dry. <laughs> but God has been in what has felt like chaos and and contending yeah. for things that should be easy. Catching your heart. Yeah. Right. Massively. As well as helping with the project. Right. I mean, in a wild twist, now that we've been working on this project for, I don't know, weeks, I think if you ask Susie or I, we would say that Jesus has been totally in it. And it was a part of the project we weren't able to do with the rest of the house. And now we're getting this bathroom with a tub in it anyway. And because a friend did it, we discovered more leaks. And so our our plumbing is actually better situated and we were able to update it. And I think at the, the end result is going to be, wow, this was scandalous. And we, we got this extra piece and mm. look what Jesus did. And in the moment you're like, goodbye, another couple thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. I think where God meets us is always opposed. So much is opposed, so much thievery. Um, and being outside with him is such a crucial place for me to find him. And I I think just being in a season where it is so hard to find him. I think I'm, I like your war of interpretation. I think I'm, I'm just in a season of feeling really lonely. I have kids. I have a husband. I have an amazing community. Um, but I'm just battling loneliness. And I think with that comes self-sufficiency. And so really trying to stay with God in where are you? And I don't see you. So I guess it is all up to me. I guess I'm on my own. And I think in order to meet him, he's like, come outside with me. Let's go on a walk. Let's go on a run. So one day went on a walk and I was just like, God, where are you? And I just hear the, I'm right here. 10 steps later, God, (laughs) (laughs) I get it. But where are you? It's like, Mm -hmm. Stacy, I'm right here. And so I think it was a few days later, I was going on an angry run, going outside. What, wait, what's an angry an run? Angry wait, run. you don't know these? Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. Running is more therapy for me than it is exercise or a plan to lose <laughs> weight. So I was wanting to go on this eight-mile loop near our house, and I'm not in that good of shape, but I was like, whatever. I have enough energy in me to to do it. But it was just, it was such a cold day, and it was just a battle. But I was... I needed it. And this has only happened to me once before, but tears and screaming. And then out of my peripheral, I can see Jesus running with me. And then the tears became real and the anger became, um, or the the yelling, because I was the only one out there in the blizzard. It just became so therapeutic. And he was there and it's okay. Like, be mad. Wow. So... That's, yeah, that's like right it's, out of yeah. the horse in his it's, boy. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was it was beautiful. You can't orchestrate it. You just have to be. That is one of know. my favorite stories where Aslan comes alongside yeah. Shasta in the woods, right? Yeah, and he says, "Tell me your sorrows." Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's and, exactly it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's and so it's beautiful. okay. It's yeah. okay. So wow. Yeah. Okay, we have been doing this for five episodes now with the hope of stirring the possibility of more encounters with Jesus, yes. stirring hopes, maybe even, Stacy used the phrase, provoking mm-hmm. last week, people to, I want that. I want more. I need that. I need more of that. So, Two fun stories to close 
the epic and the intimate. God is in the epic and he's in the intimate, mm -hmm. like right? That. You've got the Rocky Mountains and you've got the wildflower, right? Mm -hmm. You've got the sky in the morning and then you have the meadow lark on your window. He's in it all. And so, okay, so I, for one, am captured by the return of Jesus. I think about it a lot. I pray for it. It's just seized my heart. And there is a couple of amazing passages that describe the actual moments that happen. And Paul says, there's going to be a commanding shout. You're like, what? Like there's this shout from heaven. There's a trumpet blast and Jesus and the saints, the armies of heaven come. Um, and I'm like, what is that trumpet blast mm -hmm. like? And, and again, because of, you know, you bring your interpretation to scripture, I'm thinking trumpet, you know, the little three button. But it's probably more like a shofar, yeah. right? It's probably some <laughs> wild ox horn thing. Anyhow, we've been trying to expand our listeners horizon of the possibility of things available with Jesus. So like he can meet you on a run. He can meet you in your dreams. Mm -hmm. He can speak in so many different ways and, and intimate ways. So this morning, here's the, the two stories literally from this morning. So this morning, I, I'm actually just in a very simple time of morning prayers. I'm just doing my morning prayers and sitting in the sunshine and just dialing in. And the Holy Spirit says, do you want to see it? And I knew what he meant. I, mm -hmm. I wanted to see, like, what's the horn? What is that moment? And he shows me the angel and the shofar, and I get to hear it. Oh. I hear what the blast is going to sound like. Wow. Mm -hmm. It is phenomenal. It is so joyful and it's cracking me up because it's just a, it's just a Tuesday morning. It's just a, you know, and he says, there's more. Let me show you. Your mm -hmm. heart's open. Let's go. Um, so I get that incredible moment. Now, to tie it to the playful, intimate of Jesus, the top of the podcast, we're sitting here at the table in the studio. We pray, hey, Jesus, anything you want to remind us of or that kind of thing. And I look over, praying with my eyes open as I do. I look over and there's a paper clip on the table that I don't think anybody meant to leave there, but, and it reminded me, oh gosh, right. I need to order that box of paper clips. That's part of this project I'm working oh, on <laughs> at home. And I'm like, and I just like, Jesus, you crack me up. Like you are, you're reminding me of the paper clips. An hour ago, you were showing me the angel of the <laughs> shofar. And so like a paper clip and the trumpet blast. Like that is. Thanks for not starting the episode off that way. <laughs> yes. Yes. I've been hearing the trumpet of the return of Christ. <laughs> what have you guys been hearing? <laughs> the paper clip. My own and, the, see. <laughs> and the paper clip, exactly. right? Yeah, like my God is in it all. Mm. I want to read something here at the close of our series that comes from chapter 13 in Beautiful Outlaw, because mm -hmm. what I'm wrapping up could apply equally to the mm -hmm. series mm -hmm. here. What I say is, friends, this is not simply a nicer view of Jesus. This is not merely a more winsome Christ or a smattering of fresh insights. This is not confetti. Lovely while it falls, soon to be swept away, Jesus is our life. We need Jesus like we need oxygen, like we need water, like the branch needs the vine. Jesus is not merely a figure for devotions. He is the missing essence of your existence. Mm. Whether we know it or not, we are desperate for Jesus. What if you could have Jesus the way Peter and John had him, the way Mary and Lazarus did? I said at the outset of this book that to have Jesus, really have him, 
is to have the greatest treasure in all worlds, to have his life, joy, love, and presence cannot be compared. To know him as he is, is to come home. A true knowledge of Jesus is our greatest need and our greatest happiness. And so I say this, the purpose of your being here on this planet at this moment in time comes down to three things. First, to love Jesus with all that is within you. This is the first and greatest command. Everything else flows from here. Second, to share your daily life with him. Let him be himself with you on the beach, at supper, along the road, just as he did with the disciples. And third, to allow his life to fill yours, to heal and express itself through yours. There is no other way you can hope to live as he did and show him to others. Love Jesus. Let him be himself with you. Allow his life to permeate yours. The fruit of this will be breathtaking. 